Hey there, we are going to be talking about something really cool today. Um, <clears throat> for any of you not familiar with the YouTube channel number file, I would highly recommend you check it out. We are going to go over something I, I saw in one of their videos I saw I thought was really cool. It's um, um, it's it's about a game you can play with most natural numbers where you can reverse an ad. Um, and that means you take a number, you reverse it, add it to the original, get another number, uh, add that to its reverse, get another number, and you keep doing that until you get a palindrome. So with this simple example, this is one that they use in a video where they talk about it. It's you know 23 plus 32 gives you 55, which is a palindrome, and that takes one iteration. Uh, but there are some interesting cases uh, that give you some weird results. Um, this one is actually the reason that uh, this algorithm is going to be called the 196 algorithm. I, it's it's actually pretty commonly known by that, this, this game you play, because 196 is one of our interesting cases. I won't ruin the surprise for you. Uh, but yeah, so basically we're going to kind of write code that simulates this game for any number that you want to put in, and you kind of get to see what happens. So let's start off taking in that input, and we'll do um, manual input just so we can kind of test whatever we want to and uh, not have to hard code it. So first things first, we're going to check if our original number is a palindrome already because, um, you know, that's your simplest case. If it's already a palindrome, you don't have to do anything else. You just put in 55, you know, you're done. <laughs> and so we're going to do this recursively. Um, it's not the, it's probably not the best way to do it because recursion is usually pretty inefficient, but it'll be the easiest to describe and then kind of the easiest to see how it works. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass an account and a number. This count is going to be the final number of iterations you have to go through and we'll return that at the end. Uh, so what we'll do first, we're going to turn our number into a string. Um, for the purposes of palindrome checking. And we'll also print it out just so that we can keep track of what that number is during each one of these uh, recursive calls. And so we can kind of watch what our number is changing into as we go. And then uh, we're going to check for a palindrome. So check pal, and then we're going to do our number string and these indices are going to stand for the starting index and the the uh, ulti final index because we're going to kind of check from left and right and work our way in to see if our string changes so you know this one versus this one this one versus this one um, so we'll do zero and then the length of our number string minus one. Uh, so this will be our check to see if it's a palindrome. And then we'll just, for testing purposes, pally. <laughs> so let's make our palindrome checker actually work now. Uh, so our base case for this is going to be if index one is greater than or equal to index two. And that's because if it's a palindrome, um, all of these, uh, all of our checks are going to work out as we go. Uh, and I'll show you what that will look like. So we'll return one. Otherwise, if our number string, um, let's change this to, there we go. Usually you don't want to reuse variable names in different functions, but whatever. It's a small script and this is easier to read for me. Um, but yeah, so we'll say if index 1 is not equal to its mirror index, um, then we want to return 0 because that means it's not a palindrome. If you know index 0 does not equal to, uh, index n minus 1, then you know it does not read the same left uh, left to right as it does right to left. So therefore, it's, it's not going to be a palindrome. And then since this is recursive, we're going to call it self. That was a long hissing sound I just made. <laughs> I don't know why I did that, but you're welcome. And then we're going to increment index 1. 
and then decrement index two. Coolio. So let's make sure that this algorithm works before we do anything else. Uh, I probably want to call my function um, 196, and then we'll do none. And then since we have to have a count to keep track of, we're going to start with zero because obviously we haven't run any iterations yet. So let's Python 3, the shrill, and we'll start with an anagram or uh, a palindrome. Cool. Uh, and then we'll do one that's not a palindrome. Sweet. So it looks like it works. Um, maybe. Cool. Okay. Uh, now, if it is a palindrome, what does that mean? That means we're done. We've gone through all the iterations we're going to go through. So we'll go ahead and return count because that's going to be our answer. Otherwise, we need to reverse it and then add that to the original. So we'll do reverse and sum equals uh, our number. And then we'll add the integer of, uh, let's go ahead. We'll do reverse num like that. Cool. Uh, and this is going to be our number string reversed. And that's this is a kind of Pythonic way to reverse a string. That's really kind of a neat trick. Um, may need may come in handy at some point. So we'll have to turn that into an integer because we're adding up our result. And then we're going to take our reverse and sum. Let's go ahead and print out what we're doing right now, just for readability purposes when we output our results. And then we'll do reverse number. And then we will do our recursive call. So it's reverse and sum. There we go. And then we're going to increment our count since this counts as an, inter it an, an iteration. All right. Um, so I got that. And then we want to see how many times this happens. So we'll make ourselves a variable and then we'll print that value. Just like we say up here, we want it to kind of look like that. Maybe skipping the result part, just that part, and then we'll you know separate that by just a, a blank space. And we'll see. We'll see what this looks like. Let's make sure it works really quick. And I'm going to use an example they used on number file. And there we go. Pretty cool. One iteration. We see our starting number. We see the addition. We see the resulting number, and then our number of iterations we had to go through. Uh, so let's try this with a, a bigger number. Um, okay, we get some more iterations. Uh, that's five. Let's do. Let's just button mash a little bit. See what we get. Um, six. And so we have, you know, what's that? A five-digit number. Five-digit number. Let's try like. Well, let's do a six-digit number. And see, that only takes three. So like, you know, we got long numbers here, pretty or pretty big numbers, and it's still really pretty fast to, to do this game. Uh, but let's try one of our interesting cases. Let's start with 89. Uh, this is another one that they go over in the number file video. 24 iterations for a two digit number. That's crazy. Uh, just for some perspective, let's try another two-digit number. One. 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 <laughs> I mean, I hope you're seeing how cool that is. Like, three. Okay. But then you put in 89. All of a sudden, it's 24. Um, that's really cool. But it still works. You can still make a palindrome out of it through that, uh, through that simulation.
But now let's get to our, uh, our titular 196 and see what happens. You ready? Suspense. Three, two, one. Uh, so Python gives me an error, and this is actually what I was expecting because, uh, you know, this is recursive, so these build up uh, call stacks pretty quickly. Um, and then eventually your computer runs out of space or Python says, hey, you know, we, we got to stop building up all these call stacks. Uh, but let's, let's see why that happened. And again, this is, this is kind of what we're getting at with this whole thing. Just look at this and keep going up. So we start off with 196. We play our game and then we keep playing it and then we keep playing it and then we keep playing it for uh, an indeterminate amount of time. And mathematicians, computer scientists actually have yet to find a point at which 196 turns into a palindrome through this process. Uh, and and Lishrell numbers are numbers for which this process does not work or does not hold. The interesting thing is there are no confirmed Lishrell numbers. There are just numbers like 196 where you can plug it in and test it. I think they've tested it um, according to the video up to like a, a billion times or something and you still can't find it. Um, I'm sure we could break my program with a smaller, uh, with, a, with another number that does have a, uh, a finite amount of repetitions that allow it to turn into a, a Lishrell number, you know, in name. Because again, none of them are confirmed, but um, a lot of that is just the result of this being recursive and in Python. But I, you kind of get the picture. You can take a, a three-digit number like 196 and just turn it into this mess. Um, here is our addition sign. It turns into this big of a number, and then my program dies. <laughs> so yeah, this is our this is our Lishrell simulator, our 196 algorithm. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and uh, definitely check out the number file video I'm going to put in the description.